Alex, thank you. Today's breach at the Capitol downtown uh, really underscores how divided we are as a nation. What uh, will it take to get things back to some level of civility? That's the question. Fox 17 News' Rachel Teedy is now live downtown at the state capitol with some expert advice. A history and political science professor from Vanderbilt that I spoke to today says this really is a fork in the road for the GOP. He says one direction he could see it going is becoming more moderate as they see the effects of today's actions. But he says the other road might be that it just intensifies the rhetoric. This is unprecedented. Months of election discord coming to a head. People scaling Capitol walls and causing lawmakers to scramble for cover, as shown in a tweet from Representative Veronica Escobar. Here, Vanderbilt professor Dr. Tom Schwartz says this is a day of reckoning for the GOP. I think many, many Republicans who might have been unhappy with the election are deeply, deeply concerned by what they've seen happen. 29 Tennessee lawmakers supported efforts objecting to Biden's win. Lawmakers in other states doing the same. President Trump for weeks has said the election was fraudulent. Those claims not proven. Today, Senator Mitch McConnell said it's gone too far. President Trump claims the election was stolen. The assertions range from specific local allegations to constitutional arguments to sweeping conspiracy theory. President Trump released a video telling protesters to go home, but then appeared to justify the Capitol raid in a now deleted tweet. Twitter has since locked his account for the first time, demanding he remove tweets excusing violence. Schwartz says today ruined President Trump's chances for 2024, but that doesn't necessarily mean he'll be out of politics. He might be able to uh, influence where the Republican Party goes uh, by having such a strong component of support. Schwartz says much can change over the next four years, but said tonight was sadly historic. Now, President-elect Joe Biden says that this is a reminder that democracy is fragile. Fragile. He said that the action today is, quote, bordering on sedition and that it must end. We begin with breaking news out of Washington, D.C., where we are witnessing history. Protesters breaching our national, national Capitol building, putting lawmakers and staffers on lockdown. This evening, we now know at least one person, a woman, has been shot and killed as guns were drawn on the House floor. Now, nearly four hours after the violent protesters uh, supporting President Trump disrupted the electoral count, law enforcement is now declaring our Capitol secure. Police are moving in and out. They're clearing out the thousands of protesters from the grounds. This all started with protesters breaching a secure area outside the Capitol and then forcing their way inside the building. All of this as both chambers of Congress were meeting to certify the results of the presidential election. This is a live look at what's happening at the Capitol as uh, night falls. A clear line of demarcation between uh, the Capitol uh, Police, the protesters. The nation's Capitol is under curfew right now now. Riot police continue to make uh, progress clearing the area. At one point, tear gas could be seen actually coming from inside the Capitol building. Initially, lawmakers were ordered to shelter in place by police as protesters forced their way inside. D.C. police uh, are telling the Associated Press, the chief, in fact, that the protesters use some sort of chemical irritants uh, on police as a way to gain access to the Capitol building. And when protesters breached the Capitol, lawmakers, they were initially told to shelter in place before ultimately being moved. Joining us now from the Capitol, longtime Tennessee Congressman Jim Cooper. Congressman, let me say, first of all, uh, publicly, we are glad to see that you are safe. Take us through what happened. You were inside the building. Thank you, Scott. This is one of the saddest days in American history. Uh, every four years, Congress is required by the Constitution to count the votes of the Electoral College. That's what we were doing in an orderly and legal process when the Capitol was stormed by these angry protesters. And it's fine to protest, but you do not have a right to violent protest. And that's what we saw today when the Capitol uh, security was breached, not only the Capitol itself, but surrounding office buildings. And we were told to not only uh, lock our office doors, but to barricade those doors because the Capitol Police 
lost complete control of the capital complex. That hasn't happened in my lifetime. It may not have happened since the War of 1812. Jim, some other members of the Tennessee congressional delegation uh, encouraged the crowd to come. They have since uh, denounced the violence. President Trump finally went on television after a fairly long wait and asked these people to go home. How much uh, of this blame does the president and uh, members of uh, Tennessee's congressional delegation who encouraged these people to gather, how, how much are they responsible for what happened? Well, I'm not here to blame people. I'm here to solve problems. And uh, we got to remember that when you... Um, spread lies to people and conspiracy theories. There are consequences to that. So we have to all be better at telling the truth and helping people find good solutions that help everybody. Um, the disputed election, you know, you saw President Trump call the Georgia election officials even after three recounts and he still couldn't believe it. There have been over 50 court cases and the president's lost every single one, even before Trump appointed judges. There's a real insanity going on here, a mental instability. And I'm hopeful that most Americans will see that and uh, realize that we're going to have a peaceful transition of power in just two weeks, and hopefully we can return to normal. I hope so. Jim, one last question quickly. Do you fear for what uh, will happen in Washington, D.C. as night falls? Well, there's a curfew that's going in place in an hour or so, but already the police have shown they're incapable of controlling the violence and the mayhem. I hope that more people won't be hurt, and I hope that our sacred capital, which is a beacon of hope for the entire planet, is not breached again. The only people who benefited from this were the communist Chinese, the Russians, the Iranians, the North Koreans. They're loving this. And sadly, this was perpetrated by our fellow Americans. Right now, this is one of those pictures taken on the House floor during the mayhem. Protesters who breached the Capitol building were reportedly banging on what you see there as the front doors to the actual House floor. Prompting an armed standoff, you see the officers' guns drawn there at that door trying to keep the protesters out on the other side of the barricade. Meantime, chants of USA and fireworks could be heard going off near the House chamber. Capitol Police requested additional help from the federal authorities trying to get this crowd under control. Virginia and Maryland both sent both police and National Guard members downtown to D.C. to the Capitol in an effort to regain and then maintain control of that campus. This evening, Fox 17 News has learned multiple officers have been hurt and at least one person is in the hospital. Police say several threats have also been made around the Capitol. Federal and local police saying at least two explosive devices were recovered near the Capitol, which they were blown up to be rendered safe. Investigators are responding to reports of bombs in multiple locations in Washington, D.C. And despite protests breaking out in other cities across the country, no protests were seen here at our state's capital in Nashville. And shortly after President-elect Joe Biden's message to Trump's base, President Trump posted a video message on Twitter telling the protesters to leave the Capitol. That video message has been removed from Facebook, but let's listen in. I know you're paying. I know you're hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. It's a very tough period of time. There's never been a time like this where such a thing happened where they could take it away from all of us, from me, from you, from our country. This was a fraudulent election, but we can't play into the hands of these people. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. You've seen what happens. You see the way others are treated that are so bad and so evil. I know how you feel. But go home and go home in peace. As Erica just made reference to this afternoon, President-elect Joe Biden addressed the nation talking about the riots, saying that the work of the next four years will be focused on restoring democracy and that today's unrest in Washington does not properly portray our country. Think what our children watching television is thinking. Think what the rest of the world is looking at. For nearly two and a half centuries, we, the people, in search of a more perfect union, 
have kept our eyes on that common good. America is so much better than what we've seen today. We continue our breaking news now. A lot of questions remain unanswered about today's breach and what it means for our country moving forward. Joining us now to talk more about that is a former federal prosecutor, Alex Apple, who lives uh, in Nashville but did some time in D.C. Let's start with the historic aspect of the protest. Uh, Joe Biden made reference to it. We haven't seen anything like this in, in our nation's history. Alex, uh, can you hear me? He's yeah, you know, I'd say it's not, you know, it's not really a protest. This was definitely a riot. We haven't seen anything nearly yeah. like this um, probably for 100 years. And I think for folks who care about democracy, who care about the rule of law, it's a sad day in America. I must tell you, uh, uh, okay, people have been talking uh, publicly about uh, punishing those whose pictures we have seen. Do you think uh, it's going to come down uh, very hard on them? Are they looking at big federal time? <laughs> I think they should. I think the next attorney general, whoever that may be, should send a very clear message. That in the United States, you cannot storm the place of our government and attempt to stop the government's work. In terms of uh, the actual process being uh, interrupted today, is there anything in the Constitution or anything of which you're aware that would push back the inauguration based on what happened today? Because as of uh, this speaking, the, the results of the election, the Electoral College have not yet been certified by Congress. No, the, I mean, the day of the inauguration is set in, in the Constitution. Uh, that will stand. Congress appears to be continuing its work today. I suspect by sometime tonight or early in the morning, they will certify the election of President Biden. Is there anything that the incoming administration can do to begin uh, the healing, or is anything the Vice President, uh, uh, you know, Joe Biden, uh, the President-elect says, going to further enrage these folks? Well, look, I think it's a question of healing versus accountability. I think we have a party in the United States that has adhered to just, you know, snake oil and lies from the president. And I think as all, you know, all people in the United States, we should care about what the truth is. And we need to focus on that. And the truth is we have a president who was elected democratically. We should support him. And hopefully uh, folks will stop this sort of uh, these efforts. We can hope. Alex Little, former federal prosecutor. Thank you very much.